Have you ever tried to make a vacuum style pickup in Dreams but couldn't figure it out? Maybe you were able to figure it out but you couldn't keep the physics costs down. Well stick around because I'm going over exactly how to do this right now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a pickup for our player to be able to um, pick up, if you will. What a thought, am I right? Okay, so I'll make this uh, cube a lot smaller. And uh, we want it to be collidable, and we want it to um, be visible, so we'll leave it like that. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll give this a label of target. And so I'll get out a microchip and I'll stamp it on. And so we're going to put a node in here, and that'll be connected from the detected output from the labels. So let's go ahead and get a player out real quick. Align it to the grid and now I'll set the grid alignment to the puppet so that I can place this tag somewhere reasonable. Let's go ahead and set it like right there into the center. Let's label this player. So let's get a trigger zone out as well and again I'll set this to the puppet's grid set it like that and this will look for the label of target that looks good let's uh, in test mode we can see um, you know that that things currently not being detected and we get close that turns on okay so uh, the default thought would be okay so when it's on then we'll go ahead and turn on a uh, a follower right and we'll have it follow to the player tag and that's probably good enough. So when that happens, we'll do this. Um, but then we run into some issues. Um, first of all, this thing uh, was collidable, so it'll push the player around. So you may think, okay, so then we'll also go ahead and turn off collidable when that's on. Back into test mode, and then it'll follow me and it won't collide. And that's kind of cool. But um, say we had you know, hundreds of these things, um, there are already two wires, well, plus another invisible wire at least for the keyframe. Um, so let's go ahead and turn the thermometer on real quick. And so we can already see we're at, uh, well, the puppet probably counts for a lot. Okay, so here we're, we're at, um, 1500 and we have too many wires in the scene right and 1500 I guess is a lot of these things but um, it's really not that much going on in the scene right visually for us to already be hitting a wires limit so this is no good and the previous edit is too, too big to undo so I'll go ahead and deselect this one and delete all these if I can yeah delete it anyway all right so there we go so we got rid of all that okay so that's no good so we'll go ahead and get rid of this um, we'll get rid of both of those so instead what we're gonna do is we're going to emit another object that has the follower on it and only when the player has detected it will we do that so this thing instead of doing all that other stuff we'll get an emitter out and let's go ahead and create a copy of this object but this will just be this little cube here actually we can leave it but I'm going to change the label on this thing to something else let's change it to object and in here we'll get rid of this so we'll go ahead and set the follower and this will follow it to the player and we'll go ahead and turn off collidable on this object because if it's going to be following the player the second it spawns then uh, we don't really need to worry about it you know it having collision so that it doesn't fall through the floor so we'll set that to um, some strength and some damping like that and I'll turn up the speed okay so that'll be on by default 
And um, like I said, it has a different label now. So it has a object label. So here, if we take this trigger zone and make a copy, we'll go ahead and instead of looking for target, we'll look for object. And um, we will turn this zone size way down like that. So when it gets close, then we can have it delete itself. Um, so what we want to do is maybe have a little little score. So we'll get a score and placing in the puppet may not be the best idea, but um, it's just for demo purposes here. Okay, so we have the score set up. And so in here we can go ahead and when it's detected, we'll modify the score by adding one to it. And then we can also delete the object. Okay, so this thing will emit this new object, no speed, just once, exactly in the same position as the um, where the object currently is. There, like that. Okay, so when this thing gets detected, it'll emit the new one. And uh, just to make this clear, why don't we go ahead and change the color? Also, once we delete itself, or once we emit something, then we should probably um, destroy it. Now, um, this is going to still look a little funny, I think, because, oh no, it didn't, it looked fine. Right, there's a bit of a frame delay there, so let's see if we can catch it. No, nope, can't really notice, so that's fine, we'll just leave it. And now we can go ahead and turn this thing back to the default. Okay, and so now when we run over our pickup, we can see that it comes to us, it deletes itself, and it adds one to the score. So let's go ahead and set up like a little spawner for these things, and we can see how this thing ramps up. So we'll just make a quick little spawner here. Go ahead and grab this microchip, place that on there. And so this thing will spawn a bunch of these little cubes here. And we'll go ahead and have it spawn in the center of this cube like that. We'll give it some, um, I don't know, we'll have like 50 come out of here. Right? And so, it, you know, it would look like this. That's uh, an issue. Let's turn collidable off on this thing. So now we have 50 of these things coming out of here and then they all land on the floor. Right? And so if we were to run over them now, we can see that these all kind of get sucked up. So that's pretty much the gist of it, but I'm going to add a little bit of extra flair here just so it's not so vanilla. Um, let's go ahead and get some of these things out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some variability so it doesn't all just go like up, straight up like that. That's kind of that's kind of lame. Um, so I'll get this little three number combiner and I'm going to plug this thing into the uh, scene space direction. So I do want it to go up in a way, right? But um, I'd also like these things to to change a little bit. So I'll give this um, maybe like a value of like somewhere between like 0.2 and negative 2 and we'll set that to that. I'll actually just copy this thing down. And we can see that kind of sprays out in many directions. Now we can go ahead and maybe adjust the, the speed here. So if that was here like this, we'd have all of these coming out of there. That looks kind of funny. We'll have this thing spawn a bunch of different places, right? So we'll have this be somewhere between uh, negative 8 and 8. Now we'll have an emitter, a spawner that spawns the spawner, if you will. Uh, no speed, we'll just have it do it once. So we'll have this thing spawn like that. And then we'll have a little timer here. That, you know, every two seconds we'll spawn a new one. So we'll see in two seconds one spawns somewhere. 
spawns a bunch of stuff, spawns another one, right? And so maybe uh, since this thing has a limit here, we can go ahead and delete this object when it's done. So we're doing 50 at, uh, what's well, really like 50, one every frame. So uh, here if we take a calculator, we can take the um, max emitted that we want, plug that into the A, and we'll multiply it by one frame, so 0 0.033, for example. And we'll plug that into a timer. And we can have this in the target time. And when that's done, we'll go ahead and delete this object. OK, so then now that we have this going on, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works um, in terms of thermo cost to see how efficient or inefficient this solution is. So we can see all these blocks come out. And when they're blue, that means the physics engine is paying attention to them. And when they're green, that means they've come to rest and the physics engine ignores them, right? And so you can see those are green, but if something starts moving around them, then they start being taken into consideration with the rest of the physics engine, right? Because these things are being emitted by an emitter. Um, they're being turned into a movable object, right? So obviously we could see um, some problems there. And let's go ahead and watch this now. Um, we'll see the gameplay cost will shoot way up, right? Um, probably pretty quickly too. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid these things um, so that we can see how this works. So we can see like there aren't that many things here, um, but the gameplay cost is, is kind of going nuts, right? Um, and so, yeah, see here, there's not that much going on, and we have a f FPS slowdown, right? So that is not ideal. We do not want that. So that's a problem, and I'm going to show you how we can fix this. So because we're emitting these cubes out of this thing, they're being turned into a movable object, and that's why they're being considered by the physics engine. So what we want to do is um, make them not movable when we don't care about them moving anymore, right? Because these things will never move. It's only the thing that they're emitting that will move. So if we get a motion sensor or a movement sensor out, um, let's go ahead and when this thing doesn't move anymore, meaning it gets to zero, then we'll go ahead and turn a keyframe on, which will set this thing to uh, not movable. And even though it's not movable by default, because it's being emitted, it's turned into a movable object. OK, so we'll do that. And we'll have this turn this keyframe on with keep changes. Um, and just to prevent this thing from instantly turning on, we'll go ahead and give this a very small timer. And when it's done, then we'll turn this calculator on. Because I think otherwise, the second it emits, it would just freeze in place. So that will take care of it being considered by the physics engine. And now we can take a look. Um, first, we'll look at the heat map in terms of physics. So we can see that these things come out, and they're blue. And then they turn light gray, which means they're completely being ignored now by the physics engine. And they won't take up any more physics engine um, resources. Even when things are being emitted near them, see, they still all stay gray because they're not movable objects. OK? So that's cool. Now let's go back into the test mode one last time and watch the analysis. Right, they're spitting out all over the floor, but uh, they're not taking up a ton of resources anymore, right? It's shooting out a bunch of these things, but it's really not an issue. The only thing that's climbing now is the graphics cost, and that's just because we have a bunch of things all over the floor. But of course, once we get anywhere close to them, it deletes them all, and the gameplay cost stays super low. Let's do this kind of consideration that we're able to keep gameplay costs down while still having a pretty neat effect of, you know, seemingly a bunch of movable objects, which really we don't have that many on at a time, right? Nothing here is movable except for while they're being emitted. And then once they're on the floor, they're all just set still. So that's a really cool way of doing dealing with this. Um, 
and nice little profiling of how our gameplay went. Let's go ahead and take a look at the... Yep, we can see our gameplay cost was below our graphics cost the entire time. Um, and, you know, we had a thousand things emitted. So anyway, there we have it. We had this little vacuum cleanup thing. I hope this was uh, enlightening or enjoyable or uh, helps you solve any sort of gameplay issues you may be having uh, when it comes to physics costs or um, anything like this, for example. So anyway, there we have it. We had this little vacuum cleanup thing. I hope this was uh, enlightening or enjoyable or uh, helps you solve any sort of gameplay issues you may be having uh, when it comes to physics costs or um, anything like this, for example. If you have any ideas for any other tutorials uh, or gameplay mechanics that you'd like to see a tutorial for or can't figure it out how to, how to do it efficiently, please reach out to me, uh, shoot me a thing in the comments, let me know. I'd be more than happy to help out. So with that said, I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe. I'll see you in the next video.